Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. The death of Pakistani journalist Ashad is still drawing a lot of mixed political reactions amongst Kenyans. In this video, I want us to have a look at a post by Mike Movie Sonko about one day ago. A post that has really been generating a lot of heated political debate. Mike Sonko, government and the Kenya police should not be blamed for the Pakistani journalist's death. If we continue to intimidate our junior police officers who are out to perform their duties, za kuchunga usalama wa wa Kenya, we are endangering our own security. Crime rate will start going up, armed robbers will be everywhere, kidnapping the motorists, na the families, zitarudi. Women will be raped in their homes in presence of their children. Al-Shabaab will attack us mpakandani ya our airports. Malls, entertainment joints, in short Kenya, will no longer be safe. And then la let's jump to a, a paragraph that I feel is relevant for our discussion here. Who you journalist, Mpandri, the late Ashad Sharif was a wanted man in Pakistan. And the killer squad, Deep State and the system of Pakistan were pursuing him wherever he was going. He was about to release a documentary entitled Behind Closed Doors, which was implicating how Pakistan politicians and members of the Pakistan deep state and system louder money using international financial systems. His mashorum's mob Zamandai Kanairo na Mombasani ziko na dozao mingi ambazo at the same time ni a very big boost to our economy cause they pay a lot of taxes and wamiandika wa Kenya wengi. That song calls post. I want us to dissect that post to see what it means. If you are watching us for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. Yes. The first thing Sonko is trying to say that the death of the Pakistani journalist, Kenya's government might have gotten involved in it in one way or the other. And I'm saying that because Sonko is making it very clear that this was a wanted man by Pakistani government. And then Sonko make his, makes it very clear that Pakistanis have invested a lot of money in Kenya. And they also pay taxes. And they also employ Kenyans. That's Sonko just admitting that Pakistani have invested a lot of money in Kenya. So if the government of Pakistani wanted to eliminate this journalist, it's, it might be possible that they might have used Kenya's government to eliminate this journalist. Simply because the, the journalist was a threat to Pakistani government and that same Pakistani government has invested a lot of money in Kenya. They are paying taxes and also giving Kenyans jobs. So Kenya's government, if at all the Pakistani government could have requested, the, requested them to help them eliminate these journalists, Kenyan government might have cooperated. That post by Mike Movie Sonko, if you tie the loose do dots, Sonko seems to be insinuating that. Only that he's, he's writing something he does not understand. He starts by defending the government and the police officers. And then in some of his paragraphs, he contradicts himself. 
by saying the Pakistanis have invested a lot of money in Kenya and this man was wanted by the Pakistani government. That's how I'm, first of all, interpreting that, those, that post by Mike Sonko. And then secondly, that post by Sonko also just exposes the confusion among William Ruto's allies. Yesterday, Senior Councilor Menasir Abdullahi, a close Ruto ally, made it very clear through his Twitter handle that what might have killed that journalist might be remnants of the killer squads that were operating in Uhuru Kenyatta's government. So it was just maybe a remnant, remnants of that killer squad. Songo here is actually talking the, the opposite of what <laughs> senior counsel was saying. Songo thinks and believes that maybe it's the Pakistani government that might have done this. Only that is trying to build about the bush. But Songo, if you go through that entire post, is a long post, he is trying to insinuate that maybe it might have been the Pakistani government. Senior counsel made it clear that the killer squad that was operating in Uhuru Kenyatta's government might have done that. So you can now see clearly that these close William Ruto associates are just talking. They are just throwing empty words without knowing exactly what they are talking about. They are coming out as loose mouths. People who just talk without any evidence at all. They just talk through throwing words, loose mouths. And then again from that post by Mike Sonko, William Ruto is on record in public saying that he ordered for the disbandment of DCI Special Service Unit that was being used for extra judicial killing. William Root has been on record saying that. And in this forum, I did say that as much as the move might be good in helping William Ruto stop extrajudicial killings, it was very unfortunate for William Ruto to talk about it in public. It's something that could have been done in silence without even Kenyans knowing what was happening behind the scenes. Now that it was done in public, it can lead to crime. And I did put that very clearly here. As that was happening, the likes of Sonko were silent and most likely they were defending William Samoy Ruto. And now Sonko here is now claiming that by Kenyans raising issues on the way that Pakistani journalist was killed is wrong. I'm seeing some kind of a double speak here by, by Mike Bui Sonko. When uh, DCI Special Service Unit was being uh, disbanded in public, Sonko was silent. And that, that disbanded unit, we are also meant to understand from some quarters that it was also helping in nabbing kidnappings and this motor is kind of theft. That unit was also helping in curbing that. As much as it might have been used for wrong reasons, it was also helping in curbing such kind of criminalities. When Root announced in public that he was disbanding that, Sonko was silent. So Sonko's post, this post by Sonko, is just a, some kind and form of a hypo hypocrisy on the side of Mike Sonko. Sonko is once again proving that he's just somebody without any clue at all. Yeah. He's just there. He does not understand what he's saying and he's also not very honest with what he says. Mm. He's saying something today but contradicting himself maybe in the next in his the next thing he says or he's contradicting himself on the way he's also behaving. So I personally believe that that post by Mike Bovisonko 
is not honest and it just exposes the hypocrisy in Mike's uncle. And if these are the people advising the president, then they are clearly misleading the president. Yes. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. If you want to support our channel, I have pinned my number on the comment section. Contact me through the number or feel free to send any contribution to the number. God bless you. God bless Kenya.